Hi everyone and welcome to our RE lesson. So it's lesson five. How does religion help make the world a better place? And our focus is on Christianity. So the basics of Christianity. It's the world's largest religion, approximately 2.38 billion people. That is 2,380 million followers worldwide. They believe in a single God. The place of worship, as you well know, is a church. The Holy Book is called the Bible. And the most important teachings within the Bible is really based on the Ten Commandments. So that's ten rules in which Christians use to guide their everyday, uh, everyday lives. So what we're going to look at today is, well, how does Christianity or the religion of Christianity and the things that they do help to improve the world that we live in? So think now about how that might occur. I'll give you a clue. Think back to the Ten Commandments. Okay, so one of the examples here is, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. That's from Matthew, um, chapter 22, lines 37 to 39. What it means is that you should treat others like you treat yourself. Okay? There's other, uh, other rules from the Ten Commandments, like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. They're just a way of, li if you live your life that way, then the world should automatically become a better place. So today, unlike... The last lesson in Islam where we looked at charities and what those charities were doing to make the world a better place. What we're going to look at is inspirational Christians and look at how their individual efforts have helped make the world a better place uh, around them. So we're going to look at three of these people. So I'd like to introduce you to the first one when it comes through. Is Mother Teresa of, of Calcutta. So when my link comes through, sorry, the internet's a bit slow today. There we go. Okay. The love of a mother is like no other. I remember spending time with my mom. It didn't matter if I was being bad or being good. She still loved me the same. She was there to praise me when I was good and correct me when I was bad. I can also say the same thing about the women in the neighborhood. They knew my mom and they knew me. So whenever me and my friends were running around, they would make sure that we were all okay. Just thinking about how important they were in my life makes me think of another great woman in history named Mother Teresa. Have you ever heard of her before? Well, Mother Teresa was a nun who spent her entire life helping people who were in need. When looking in history books, Mother Teresa is known as a great humanitarian. Growing up through her life wasn't easy because her father died when she was eight. She was left with her mother to raise her and show her how to be a giving woman. Growing up, she went to public school. It was there where she got involved with a group that did mission trips around the world to spread their faith that they believed in. Many say Mother Teresa's love of faith began as a child and it only grew from there. This was because she knew at a young age she was called to devote her life to God and made a vow to be a nun. From there, she spent 15 years teaching in an all-girls school until she felt a call for something else. By the time she turned 36, she wanted to do something bigger and greater. That is where she started going out into the streets of India, helping to feed the poorest of the poor. Her mission was simple. She wanted to help those who were unloved, sick, and could not do for themselves. Now, of course, this was not easy. Many times, while trying to feed those who had no food, she was hungry herself. While working with the poor, she began a school and also got basic medical training to help those that were sick. Never giving up, Mother Teresa later formed an organization called the Missionaries of Charity. With her organization, other nuns from around the world joined her to help her complete her vision. Beginning with only 13 nuns doing work in the area of giving to the needy, her organization today has expanded to over 4,000 nuns working to help others. Her hard work did not go unrecognized. Mother Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize. Mother Teresa died, but her legacy lives on through the works of her organization. One thing we can say is even with no money, love changed the lives of many, and Mother Teresa took those faithful steps to give and love to those who needed it the most. 
my apologies on this one. So that is going to be Martin Luther King. I'll see whether or not it will open up on here. So let's have a look. Fingers crossed. Peloton advert. This is not exactly ideal, but let's try again.
Right then, I'm back to this. So, our final Christian is Desmond Tutu. So, here we go. Fingers crossed. On African icons today, we have Desmond Tutu. Desmond Mepilo Tutu was born on October 7, 1931, at Klekdop, South Africa. His father was an elementary school principal. His mother worked as a cook and cleaner at a school for the blind. In South Africa, Tutu was born into was a rigidly segregated society. Although as a child, Tutu understood that he was treated worse than white children based on nothing other than the color of his skin. He was resolved, therefore, to make the best of the situation and he still managed to have a happy child. His family moved to Johannesburg when he was 12 and it was around this time he contracted tuberculosis and nearly died. And because of this, he was determined to get into medical school. Tutu was accepted into medical school, but his family could not afford the fees. In 1958, Tutu was enrolled at St. Peter's Theological College and was ordained as an Anglican deacon in 1960. Tutu became popular when he became the first black person ever appointed the African Dean of Johannesburg in 1975. It was this position that gave him prominence and eloquence in the anti apartheid movement. Tutu became a bishop. In 1976 and in 1984, he received a Nobel Peace Prize, and in 1985, he was made a bishop, being the very first black person to occupy that position in South Africa. He has authored books such as God's Dream, The Rainbow People of God, No Future Without Forgiveness, The Book of Forgiveness. This month, he got married to their normal in 1955, and they have four children. Yeah, we made marriage today. See you next time on African Idols today. So, uh, there are three inspirational Christians, um, all who have done things that have changed the world around them. So, for example, Mother uh, Teresa in Calcutta, helping the poor and needy. You have got Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement in the United States. And you've got Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and his fight against apartheid and racial segregation in South Africa. So your task, task one, is to choose one of those famous Christians and do some research on them. So your famous Christian is, you write down the name of the Christian that you've chosen. Where were the, the place of birth, the date of birth, and when they died? Uh, all three of them are now dead. Personal information, so, you know, who were their family? Uh, what they're famous for? What did they do? What inspired their work? Um, also to do with their belief in God. Um, how have their actions made the world a better place? Why are we actually looking at these people? And then five words to summarise them. Um, when you've done that, your second task then is to take one of these pictures, I mean you can do all three if you want, and if you place a blank piece of paper over the top of their face, and then write down the five key words that you've done over and over and over again to create a word picture of their um of the outline of their face and you can see three that miss cross did earlier so desmond tutu is down here in the bottom corner uh, mother Teresa is here and martin luther king jr is there and that's it good luck thank you bye bye